Hello. So, in this uh, video, we're going to be talking about rational functions, and in particular, the domains of rational functions. So, again, we've looked at rational functions uh, sort of unofficially already when we did the algebra of functions, right? So, again, this f over g applied to x, which is f of x over g of x. And if you remember when we had this definition, there was one caveat that we had to add in that it was like, you know, everything works the way you would think, except division has one little extra rule, which is that here, g of x cannot be zero. Which makes sense, right? Because we don't want to divide by zero. So this is basically the, the crux of the uh, rational function domain issue. So for rational functions, we want, um, Basically, the domain, so this is the sort of implicit domain, the biggest possible domain. So the domain is um, the largest set that works. And I'm going to write that sort of unofficially. By works, I mean is valid for so works for f of x, g of x, and uh, such that g of x is not equal to zero. So I'm going to do a couple examples here, because um, again, this is one of those things that's much easier to just sort of see rather than uh, sort of talk about. So let's say we have the function. Uh, so let's look at r of x, and let's do something like x squared plus 5x minus 6 over uh, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay? And the question is, uh, what is the domain, the sort of largest domain we can use here? So on the one hand, I need to make sure that my domain is valid for the f and g, the top and bottom independently. So I need to make sure that the top is okay and the bottom is okay. But the top and bottom, meaning the numerator and denominator functions, are both polynomials. So since they're both polynomials, their domains their domains are both all real numbers. But that's them independently, right? I'm saying that you can plug any number into this top function, x squared plus 5x minus 6, and it'll work. You can calculate it. You're not going to get something weird. You can plug any number you want in the bottom, and the bottom, you can calculate. It won't get something weird. But we also have to worry about then trying to take that division, right? Specifically, we now need, so we also need, also need to make sure that the bottom function, x squared plus 5x plus 6, does not equal 0. So the sort of best way to tackle this then is to factor this thing. Um, so because really, right, I'm, I'm asking, what I want to know is when is this um, polynomial equal to zero so I can avoid those values. But I find out where it equals zero by doing factoring, right? This is, again, polynomials. So I can factor this thing. Uh, we've done factoring a bunch already, so I'm just going to sort of skip ahead here. Uh, I encourage you, as usual, to actually do it out and make sure you're OK with it. Um, so you're going to get x minus 1 times x plus 6 in the top, and then x plus 2, x plus 3 in the bottom. Okay. So in particular, the bottom then, x plus 2, x plus 3, we want that that is not 0, which means, right, this again, the, the sort of way you do this is you find out where it is 0, which is going to be when x uh, is negative 2 and x is negative 3. And you say, OK, that's when it is 0, so we want them to be not 
that. Okay. So then my domain is the sort of uh, intersection of all these, is what we would say. So it's, it's the sort of uh, biggest set we can make that makes all things satisfied. Except in this case, you know, since the top and bottom are both polynomials, it's both R, so we don't have to satisfy anything there. So really all I need then is these, I need these two properties. So R of X's domain is simply X not equal to negative two and X not equal to negative three. So alternatively, you could also write this as negative infinity to negative three, union negative three to negative two, union negative two to infinity, if you prefer interval notation. I guess also we could write this as r set minus negative three comma negative two. It's a quick reminder, okay? But, I know you love hearing me say that word, but wait, there's more. <laughs> so this is a relatively straightforward example because they're polynomials. But remember, I was saying in the last video when we introduced these that there's no reason to always assume that they are. So in fact, let's do an example where that is not the case. And I wrote down one, again, to make sure it's a little more interesting. So let's say that h of x is uh, square root negative x plus 1. Um, let's see, plus 3 over square root of x plus 1 minus 1. Okay, so same sort of deal here. I want to look at the restriction that's necessary for the top, the restriction that's necessary for the bottom. So I'm going to look at the domains of both of those. And then also, I need to cut out the chance that the bottom is 0. So for the top, right before the top was just a polynomial, so it was all real numbers. Here though I have a uh, square root, right, even root. So that means that I need the inside to be greater than or equal to zero. So I need negative x plus one greater than or equal to zero. Move the x over, I have one greater than or equal to x. Likewise with the bottom function, right, the denominator. Again, I'm, I'm looking at just this thing in isolation and looking at what the possible restrictions are. So I'm going to look at, again, since it's a square root, I need x plus 1 to be greater than or equal to 0. So I can move then 1 over. I'm going to get x greater than or equal to negative 1. So I have this as a restriction and this as a restriction. But those are, again, to stress this, this is just the case where I'm looking at the top and bottom independently, then I need this sort of rational function property. I need to make sure that the bottom, square root of x plus one minus one is not zero, right? Because I wanna make sure I'm not dividing as a function, right, as h of x entirely, I wanna make sure I'm not dividing by zero. So then I have to solve this, I move the one over, so I get the square root of x plus 1 equals or doesn't equal 1 is what I want. Square both sides. x plus 1 should still not equal 1, which means x should not equal 0. But remember from radicals, I squared both sides, so I got to double check to make sure that this actually would be a problem. So if I plugged in 0, I would get indeed 0, right? So if I plugged in 0, I get 1, square root of 1 is 1, minus 1 is 0, and that's what I want to avoid. So I really need to avoid x being 0. So then h of x domain is, I need to make sure that I have uh, x less than or equal to 1, that's this, x greater than or equal to negative 1, that's this, and x not equal to zero. So if you're not sure what this is, just by looking at it, you can always graph these things, right? So I have zero, one, negative one. So I want it to be less than or equal to one. 
I want it to be greater than or equal to negative 1. And I need that it is not 0. And then I look at where they overlap, right? So not 0 means it can be anything else, right? So it overlaps everywhere except 0 between negative 1 and 1. So I have negative 1 to 1, not counting 0. So I write that as 0 union 0 to positive 1. OK? So again, the, <coughs> the concept, insofar as the rational functions are concerned, is not difficult. Uh, for the rational function, all you got to care about is that you make sure the bottom is not equal to 0. But then you have all the other things that are involved in finding a domain, right? So you got to make sure that sort of all the other pieces are, don't have them, their own domain restrictions for their own reasons above and beyond being a rational function. That's why you got to look at the top and bottom separately and then make sure that the bottom as a whole doesn't equal 0. OK? Um, I will point out that sort of what happens uh, when, you hit, when you get zeros, uh, so like a 0 on the bottom or whatever, these domain restrictions, um, they, tend, they, they can be either holes or vertical asymptotes, and which one they are depends on sort of how it works, <laughs> uh, which I know is very vague, but that's exactly what we're going to cover in the next two videos. So um, for right now, this is just figuring out what the domain restrictions are. In the next two videos, we'll talk about uh, what the, how to tell which one is which in terms of the types of discontinuity. Okay. So that is that.